for last few months we were stuck in a lockdown and this platform right now is an example how the entire pandemic affected us it personally affected me as a nature photographer and a wildlife like a marine biologist that i wasn't able to go on field for last several months and it was frustrating because we heard many news about native wildlife which are coming into our cities and like dwelling in our cities and some of apart from few exceptions some of those news were true and it really like because i want to i wanted to capture all those moments it was a really really like disappointing for me and when i talk when i talk about capturing moments i'll be sharing a few stories with you just to give a gist of what is happening around us so yeah so this image i clicked this image just one day before the lockdown started in mumbai this is a honeycomb more eel and i clicked this image during a low tide on the shore of south bombay south mumbai you can see in the backdrop you can see the city the eel was stuck on the rocky shore because of the low tide and the rock behind it uh, there is a crevice under it and that crevice was its den so these are predatory fish species which usually you will see uh, when you if you go to scuba diving you will see them under water dwelling around around coral reefs eat, feeding on all other fishes or crabs but to see such an amazing animal right in the heart of mumbai was a very much joyful experience for me and this was about 8 months ago and recently a few days back i called one of my friends who stays nearby this shore and i asked him to check this spot again whether the eel is present or whether it is using this spot again so when he went to the shore he saw something like this he said the entire spot was buried under the uh, the gravel or the whatever they are dumping on it this is the coastal road reclamation i won't call it as a reclamation because if you look at the word reclaiming you claim something which is originally belongs to us so reclaiming is that so this is not practically reclamation this is encroachment made by humans like did by us on nature so two years ago when i heard about this project i thought uh, originally it was going to be on stilts like we have bandra worli sea link in mumbai so why uh, they were saying that this road is the need of mumbai and it will reduce traffic and all other problems so why do we need to reclaim an entire patch right from the sea shore in 100 meter inside the sea you don't have to dump like dump uh, dump all these rocks and gravel on it and make a road you can build it on stilt right so my idea behind that was like because it will be built on silt the water flow will remain the same and now this thing is going like in some other direction they are building it on a like 100 meter encroachment thing but do we really have that much money that we are spending on this thing if we do have that much amount of money then why are we spending on this no one is questioning about it and few people did actually but yeah it doesn't work out but if we have that much money then why don't why 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 we are not spending it on local transportation or the the roads which we already have which are in bad condition produce the traffic traffic jam so these are a few questions which i had in my mind and apparently a few people like nature enthusiasts activists and like students they protested against the coastal road you can see the one banner uh, in which it is written apla kinara vaswa zavabdari ne vikas kara it means save our coast and develop logically or like take respon like uh, develop responsibly it is not against the de development of that road but it is developing responsibly or like you should you should not like uh, obstruct the flow of ocean to build something on it but apparently it like the entire protest and everything failed this these these are some photographs uh, i recently visited this site it's in dahanu these are soft corals sea slug shells and this is amazing wildlife marine wildlife which is right at our coast in dahanu district 
and apparently even this site is going away very soon if we don't do anything so uh, the entire shore is about 5000 hectare land which is going to be encroached to build a port and why do we why are we building a port to uh, transport coal from australia to india so earlier speakers talked about re using renewable uh, energy sources and still we are stuck at the coal and destroying all these natural habitats so do we need all like we are not really uh, understanding the importance of all these species so apart from and uh, like encroaching on the 5000 hectare area uh, this entire case was there in our supreme court 20 years ago and the supreme court rejected that project because it the study said that it is going the if they built a port over there it is going to uh, like we have to re, uh, translocate 47 villages around it and because because the sea level will eventually rise and that's why the water will enter the villages and like you can't do anything about it apart from that there is a uh, uh, tarapur atomic research station right like 12 kilometers south to this site if the water level rises it will affect the atomic power station as well and we have no idea how it will affect us and it the if the they built a port over there it is going to uh, affect like lakhs of like lakhs of people will like lose their livelihood those are fishers and we are so we are not actually relating all these links to the to its cause like yeah we need energy but at the cost of what do we need these energy so ultimate so ev what everybody is saying from last several years is sea water sea water level is going to rise and this is a new this is a new estimate of by 2050 the most of the mumbai is going to be submerged under water which is basically encroached or reclaimed as we say and what are our so what are our uh, strategies to like to uh, counter it is building a sea wall like in many reports you must have heard about building the sea walls on the sea shore so that it will protect the coastline it will reduce the erosion it will like reduce the wave action and so and reduce the flooding obviously so sea wall and putting those tetrapods on our coast is going to do that so that's what we were listening or that's what we were seeing for last several years but these are the types of hard engineering solutions and before that so hard engineering solutions are actually more expensive we are affecting nature in a way because those that cement does not belong in the ocean but we are still putting it in the ocean so some animals do adapt to that environment so cement is alkaline so some anim animals do adapt that cement or like they gather around it or so but most of the animals don't like they are very sensitive and they get affected because of it and this is expensive and another thing is short term these are short term solutions but what we are ignoring is the soft engineering solutions and it is not something which we have to make and put it in the ocean but we like we already have those things in our, on our coast the best thing is these mangrove forests which we have all along our coast these as you might have heard because like they reduce the impact of waves like they are well, they protect us from tsunamis and cyclones and everything so similarly we can create sand dunes on the sand, sand dunes on the sandy shore which will ultimately they are going to like reduce the wave action or protect our entire coastline from the all these sea water level rise or waves and we don't and apart from that we can plant mangroves that's the best thing or we can create these things and in return they are giving us oxygen plus there are rocky shores which we have though like we as a tourist we go to the sand we usually go to the sandy shores but what rocky shores do is they are natural wave breakers and we have never seen them like that so usually we used to see that rocky shores are wastelands or like there is nothing on the rocky shore but to be very honest 
it is one of the most productive areas on the entire coastline the entire rocky shore shore area and plus all these soft engineering solutions also support livelihood because there are fishers who fish on in the rocky shores or in the mangroves or even on the sandy shore so we are helping them as well by protecting what we have and talking about the like there are a few reports which say like uh, the sea water uh, level rise is not going to affect mumbai and like some of those reports are like 3 months or like they have studied that area for only for 3 months and they are saying it but in case of natural eco like in case of natural systems it takes time for one to observe all these processes so for example it might be a bird migration pattern which might have changed it might be a uh, depletion in the fish catch or it might be change in the changing weather patterns so if you ask our elders they might they might tell you ke, yeah we used to see that bird here like 50 years ago but right now it's we aren't seeing the like we are not seeing that bird anymore or something like that so these changes are not direct but indirect and we are the one not as a biologist i'm saying this but we are the one who should like do our bit and document all these things because documentation is where we lack so we had stories which our elders used to tell but right now all of us are busy in our lifestyle and we don't have that much time but once in a while or in a once in a year or on every weekend maybe it's possible we can go on our show document what we have so you don't have like you don't need a dslr or any high fund high fund cameras we all have cameras in our cell phones all you have to do is just go and click a photograph yeah you can post it on instagram or social media but there are many more websites for example the first name you can see is i naturalist it is an international portal which supports a uh, citizen science projects what is citizen science is basically observations made by citizens like in maybe it it might be a voice clip of a bird or it might be a photograph or maybe a video I, it can be anything any media thing which you will upload on the that website and depending upon your uh, area in which you live there will be multiple projects for example here you can see marine life of mumbai is one of the citizen driven initiatives which is so their uh, so their best like uh, the, their intention is to document the entire coastline's diversity and another citizen driven initiative is save our coast so their intention is to spread awareness through all these uh, website repositories so they collect the data from these websites and they spread it in the people through various channels or twitter handles and like other things another thing which we are facing is depletion in fish catch so it is so uh, maybe some of you might have been like uh, like they some some of us love to eat fish but most of us usually eat only one type of fish like some of us will prefer pom fret all the time so that's why so we are creating a demand for that fish and by creating a demand we are indirectly putting pressure on those wild populations so we have to understand that though we eat fish it's still wildlife in ocean they roam like wild animals so we are putting a pressure on these populations and making them vulnerable so here the initiatives like in season fish and know your fish comes in the picture so they Uh, suggest you to make better seafood choices to and the ultimate goal is to reduce pressure from the vulnerable fish population so instead of having a pomfret you might have a sardine or sometime so you, how they you can go to their websites actually and check how the they have made charts they're very very beautiful charts on their website so you can go to their website and check those charts when to eat which which fish and why to avoid certain fishes during certain season then comes the uh, role of ngos like there are wwf there are sprouts sprouts environment environment trust there is naturalist foundation and then there is government body like mangrove foundation so all of them are continuously trying to aware the citizens or basically citizens of our country by doing various activities they conduct nature trails they conduct workshops and they are trying to uh, 
trying to make a connection between the marine life and the humans by understanding them but still these are only a handful of names which we have in our country and we need more people from different background so you don't have to be an like a marine biologist or an activist or an environmentalist whatever like wherever you work whatever profession you have you can always do your bit by documenting so even if you go on a vacation in, for example to goa and you might see some creatures lying on the beach you might just click it and upload it so even that goes to those uh, online repositories and some like some scientists may use that data some like some ngo might use that data to do some like productive out of it and we are not here to oppose everything actually we are here to like brainstorm what we need to do is connect to each other and brainstorm and do brainstorming sessions because that's why that's where we are lacking we are not talking about it we are not talking about it much so it uh, the all these issues which i have told you told you about marine life it is all uh, it is only limited to the scientific community or the nature enthusiast community it, it is not going out of it so we need to connect on it like every one of us we need to connect on it we need to talk about it and maybe uh, we can uh, go and spread do campaigns with villagers or children or with teachers which are basically making the new generation of our country and we can always do that and always do our bit so yeah thank you uh, 